Kenya's loss of genetic material is invaluable. Livestock breeders have raised the red flag, noting that in fact the country has lost its Boran cattle gene to South Africa. Today, the Boran is in America, but not as a Kenyan Boran. It is a South African Boran. The South Africans came around here in the 90s and the early 2000s. They took embryos from us through the old Vegeta Conservancy. And then when the animal started walking on the ground in South Africa, they realized very quickly the importance of the Boran. So they registered it as South African Boran. In addition, they say crossbreeding has led to the extinction of the Nandi cow species that was well adapted to the local environment. But the way the world is going in the world of genetics, it's been found out that every animal adapts to its environment. Nandi cow, which is very indigenous to this country, in those primitive years, as we may take, was found out that it could, out of natural grass, you would get your 10 liters out of what we call kikuyu grass on an indigenous animal. The Americans were clever. They took the embryos. They have it in their gene bank. The other years, we wanted to look for the nandi cow. It's no longer there. The Kenya Livestock Breeders Organization is warning that this loss of genetic resources is counterproductive to sustainable livelihoods in the marginal areas. Thank God we have now the sheep breed called the Red Maasai. We should jealously guard the genetics of the Red Maasai. It has got on its own good attributes that we should not lose sight of. Worse still, pastoralists and livestock keepers are having to contend with encroachment onto their areas by those engaged in crop farming. This has further been complicated by the discovery of minerals and oil in marginal areas and rangelands. Issues of competition for resources, especially water and pasture, meaning that we, the, 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 the whole new uh, uh, process in terms of agriculture and, and, and also natural resources is moving into an area where the communities were never used to it. And our worry is once they actually start getting connected to these new initiatives, would that change their attitude? East African Farmers Federation President Dr. Philip Kiriro has called for strengthening of farmers' organizations through capacity building to enable them be the first line of defense from a scrapless individuals. We have actually requested other regional economic communities like IGAD to support that process. Once we actually have mobilization of communities, because again, we cannot do very much as a, as, as a continental network without ownership at the community level. Ensure participation in regional policy hubs and include farmers' organizations in the animal resource information system training and its interoperability with other information systems. Breeders have appealed to the government to utilize international instruments and ensure that Kenya's genetic material is protected for posterity and for the good of the country. Judith Akolo, The Business Defined.